right, hey, welcome back. Today, we're gonna take a deep dive into terrain analysis. So just a bit of a disclaimer, I'm an engineer officer, so some of the things I say, I might be getting a little carried away with the terrain analysis, but terrain is my jam. So I like to analyze it quite heavily. So as we talked about before, terrain analysis, the, the acronym for terrain analysis is OACOC. So we got obstacles, avenues of approach, key terrain, observation of fields of fire, and cover and concealment. And also, as we said in the, uh, the TLP's video, before you actually start doing your terrain analysis, we, we create a thing called a G-dive. It's, it's a graphical depiction of terrain, all right? So for the G-dive, what we do is we take our map, uh, imagery, whatever we have for our objective area, and really our entire AO, we put an overlay over it, and we identify the severely restricted and restricted terrain, and that shows us where the existing obstacles are within our AO. All right, so the way you do that is take a green marker, a map marker, and on our overlay, uh, terrain that looks restricted or severely restricted we're gonna outline it with our green marker and then for what you consider to be restricted terrain you're gonna put just single hashes all the way through that outline all right and that will signify restricted terrain and for restricted terrain think of uh, you know terrain where the contour lines on a map are starting to get closer where there's like swampy areas a creek maybe and then you're gonna do the same thing for severely restricted terrain, all right? Except you're gonna put double hashes through it, all right? So your line should be crossing all the way through. And for severely restricted terrain, think like lakes, uh, cliffs, and kind of general rule of thumb is if you're gonna need special equipment to get up it, you know, as like a dismount, then it's probably severely restricted. All right, so once you do that, you should have a nice visual of where all the obstacles are. Those are your existing obstacles. And you'll notice if you don't get too carried away, that in between those obstacles, there are openings. There's no there's no color there. There's no green that you've drawn in, right? And those are our mobility corridors. So now you, on your G dot, you're gonna draw in the mobility corridors. If you don't remember what those look like, use your black marker and there's little crow's feet at the end of the line. You just make a line for the where the corridor is. And then you're gonna put the unit size in there that you think it is, all right? So like a platoon, you'll put your three dots, a company, you know, one line, etc. all right? So that's what we do next. Now your visual should be, you can clearly see where the obstacles are, you can see where the mobility corridors are, which are, those are potential avenues of approach. All right, then we're gonna identify key terrain. So we'll get into this, uh, deeper into this here in a minute but your key terrain is not going to be every hilltop every intersection right your key terrain is going to dominate it's going to dominate the biggest most significant obstacles and the most important avenues of approach in your AO all right so we'll get to that more later and then really for observation fields of fire current concealment you don't need to do anything what you can do for observation fields of fire is actually draw like the ranges of weapon systems from key terrain and stuff but it's not totally necessary so now once we've completed our GDOT, we should have a, a beautiful visual of what the train's doing. We should see our obstacles, where the avenues of approach are, etc. So now we go into our actual analysis. So for obstacles, the most common pitfall I see that drives me crazy is for obstacles, we will just identify an obstacle and then we'll say it's gonna slow us down or make us go a different way. That is not how you analyze obstacles. Obstacles have four effects and that's it turn block disrupt and fix so those are the terms that you should be talking in we identify first we should start off with the most significant existing obstacle identify what effect it has and then give the so what all right and the so what is not it's going to slow us down or make it or going to take longer right friendly and enemy use obstacles to kill each other they are deadly their obstacles are neutral but we use them to kill other people so your conclusion should have something to do with the fight you're about to have around the objective area, all right? So for example, Mineral Springs Brook, this existing obstacle has a disrupt effect. The significant conclusion about this obstacle, it is about 100 meters from the objective. If the enemy is aware at all, they'll likely be overwatching this obstacle because it's a linear danger area and it disrupts us. So it'll allow them to do two things if they use it. One, they'll be able to see us quite far and identify our approach. Uh, that will provide them early warning then they can maneuver on us and then two if they want to amplify the effect of that disrupt they'll place direct fires over it they can attack us and we'll inflict casualties therefore 
we should avoid Mineral Springs Brook near the objective at all costs. That That is a good deduction, right? That is something that we can use and action on. All right, another, we'll say another example. So Mineral Springs Mountain, all right, 100 meters west of the objective. This is an existing obstacle. Its natural effect is turn. What is the key deduction from this? Again, if the enemy is aware and taking any sort of uh, active precautions, this mountaintop is the most likely to be reinforced with tactical obstacles. And because of this, it is also the most likely to be overwatched and used. So the enemy is probably going to mass their fires near this obstacle here. Therefore, out of the entire AO, this one specific spot is the most likely that contact will break out within the AO. Therefore, let's say we're doing a raid. We should avoid it at all costs. We don't want to be compromised. We don't want to take contact or action until we're in our assault positions undetected and we can kick off the raid. All right, those are good, significant deductions. Again, you want your deductions to be something you can action, all right? And then that will segue into our avenues of approach. So again, you should be able to see where avenues of approach are with the mobility corridors on your G dot. And you want to identify the most likely, the most important, etc. All right. So let's say you have a mobility corridor going straight from your assembly area, the FOB, or your ORP to the objective. And again, let's say the air, the enemy is in some kind of defense, or they're doing some kind of patrolling, and they're aware a little bit. What would you? What is the conclusion you're going to make about that that mobility corridor or that avenue approach from your ORP to the objective? The conclusion, it is the most likely avenue of approach. Therefore, it'll be the most likely to be overwatched. And again, the most likely to take contact, especially if it's passing right next to these existing obstacles we just identified. That's a very good conclusion. Now we know not to take it and that we should probably look for other ones, all right? And then on the flip side, let's say there's a, a smaller mobility cord, corridor on the back side of an objective. There's no significant existing obstacles or tactical advantage to that avenue of approach. The conclusion is that the enemy is less likely to be observing it. We have, we have less likely chance of taking contact. The enemy doesn't expect us. Therefore, it's probably a better avenue approach to take. Maybe not our primary one, but at least an alternate avenue approach. All right, so think of obstacles and avenues approach in terms of like, what can we action? What can the enemy action based off of, all right? If you do a good job with that, that, that makes it easy to pick key terrain because a piece of key terrain is going to dominate those obstacles and avenues of approach that you deemed worthy enough to analyze, all right? A key terrain is not every hilltop. A lot of times it is a hilltop, all right? But the key to picking good key terrain is it dominates those other, the obstacles and avenues of approach, and avenues of approach that we talked about earlier. Uh, we get to observation fields of fire, cover, concealment. We can kind of chill and like not go so crazy with analyzing these. But they should be specific again to the obstacles and avenues approach that you just depicted. Like you don't need to describe observation fields of fire everywhere within your AO. You should describe it from pieces of key terrain, from the objective. So for instance, uh, from observation fields of fire from Mineral Springs Mountain. To the east, we have about 800 meters of uh, observation fields of fire. But to the west, because of IV lines and visibility, uh, anybody on this hilltop can only see about 200 meters to the to the west. That is a good conclusion to draw, or at least identify, because then we know if we're going to approach from the west versus the east, like there's a better chance of being seen, or it helps us determine the advantages that this terrain gives us. All right. And the same with the cover concealment. You do you want to take a good look. Don't just say, hey, there's rocks and trees everywhere throughout. Like if the enemy has fighting positions, you want to go into detail on what kind of fighting positions they have and the advantage that provides them. You, you have to do good terrain analysis before we get into our enemy analysis because the enemy necessarily is going to fight that terrain, right? A good enemy is going to take advantage of the things we just analyzed. And a lot of times we over, we are, excuse me, we under analyze terrain and then we have a poorly developed enemy that's going to kick our butt later on. All right. So, hey, thanks for watching and I uh, look forward to seeing you.